Senator, there really is nothing that I can say to follow up after you delivered that incredibly heartfelt, such raw emotion, because it is something that is so intimate and personal to you. But I'm going to offer a small correction to what you said. Republicans did want this. They wanted this. The Republicans wanted this, but now it is squarely the dog with its teeth firmly on the bumper of that car. They have caught the car. So now they want to backpedal like Carrie Lake and pretend like this is so outrageous and this is not what they intended it to be. How do we hold them accountable for them wanting Trump being the architect of the fall of Roe and the Republicans being responsible for you having to stand in front of the world and say and explain what happened to you? Thank you so much for having me here today. And I think that what's important to keep in mind is that we are going to have Republicans voting for this ballot measure when it comes to the ballot in November and that plenty of Republicans receive abortion care. And I think that that's the point that I'm trying to drive home is that um, this is really self-defeating and that it is the Republican leaders and these elected officials who uh, are behaving exactly like we knew they would, who are behaving the way that they have for decades slowly eroding these rights over time. And now they're really in a tricky situation because the Republicans in Arizona don't want to allow a Democratic bill to be the solution to this problem. They don't want to allow us to have a win. They don't want us to get credit for cleaning up their mess. But they also are not going to be able to put forward a bill of their own because the infighting right now in the Republican Party is, is pretty intense. So I'm not really sure what it is that they plan to do with this situation, but it it is imperative that we hold them accountable. We cannot let them forget that this is a problem that they created and that even if we do come up with a short term solution for this problem, even if we do repeal this ban, they are going to continue to chip away at these rights and to erode these rights for decades to come. We really have to make our voices heard in November. Electing pro-choice candidates is our only solution. Vice President Harris stating today in your state of Arizona that Trump is to blame for this. He is the architect of the fall of Roe, and she attributed it a lot to the fact that we have three Supreme Court justices who were appointed by Donald Trump during his administration. You know, I've always said, Senator, that the fall of Roe didn't happen overnight. I think there was a little bit of some complacency that went into the idea that there's no way that it could have ever happened because there's been decades of precedent but admittedly, we got snowed during those confirmation processes and during those confirmation hearings. But, I mean, how important is it for people to also understand, too, that the judges that are making these decisions, some of whom are elected into the offices, some of whom face merit retention votes, like in my state of Florida, for example, that the judges also need to have some accountability for what's happening, too? No, that's 100 percent too. We, true. We have Republican appointed judges who are responsible for this decision that happened here in Arizona. And I think that's where the conversation has to shift to these down ballot races. Yes, it's very important to focus on the top of the ticket. This happened because of Donald Trump. There is no question about that. And that is an imperative part of the conversation. But what happens in our local government, in our local legislatures and um, with our local judges is equally important and can have just as much, if not more of an effect. We see it happening state after state after state as these rights are being withdrawn and taken away. And the solution time and time again is for citizens to be able to come and take that power back. Um, but we know that these fights are going to continue and that uh, we really need to obtain majorities and, and retain the White House in order to make the difference that we need to make after November. I do want to share my sympathy to you, um, Senator, for your loss um, and, and the fact, again, that you have to be you have to be so transparent about something that's so personal to you and yet you're doing it so that I can have an opportunity to, to have access to reproductive rights. My daughter can have that access, that that th this can be something I can't begin to express how much I appreciate what you've done to be able to speak out about this. I know it hasn't been easy for you, so my sympathy. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. What I will say is that women should not have to re-traumatize themselves over and over and over again to be able to access uh, appropriate health care, to be able to have the rights that they deserve. But I also think that it's so important for those who do feel comfortable speaking out to speak out loud and and as as 
broad of an audience as they possibly can. We have to have these conversations because this moment is so critical. And if we don't tell our stories, then the people who are controlling the conversation are wrong. What they're saying about abortion is wrong. What they try to the picture that they try to paint of who the abortion patient is, it's wrong. And we have to take back that narrative. We have to take back that story. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to do it. I I'm sad that my pregnancy didn't progress. We tried and tried to have a baby and to grow our family. And I don't know how people in Arizona are supposed to feel comfortable trying to, to grow their families when we're in this really hospital inhospitable environment for pregnant people right now. You know, this is a hostile environment to be pregnant in Arizona, not knowing whether or not you're going to be able to get the care you need if something goes wrong. It's unacceptable, and we just have to do something about it. And this is the best that I can do, and I'm going to keep doing it. Well, it's more than just good. It's it's amazing. And again, thank you so much, Arizona State Senator Eva Birch, for being here and for sharing your story and for being such a strong advocate, like I said, so we all can have a chance. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.